It's Saturday night. The kids are in bed. Which means we did it. We survived another week. So let's talk about it. From our latest homebrew project. To kids crafting projects. It's just talking life with two young kids and two dogs. Grab your favorite beverage. Sit back. Relax. And see where the conversation takes us. Sometimes we don't even know until we get there. This is the Craft Parenting Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Craft Parenting Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Another week has flown by and it isn't Saturday, but it's close enough. It's a holiday weekend. It's an extra day of drinking and partying and lounging around the house. Yeah, we decided to take a Saturday off for once. And we are but we are still recording. We are still we still have our nose to the grindstone and we are working. Yes, we are. For your listening pleasure. Yes. We are here and we are recording another episode. My name is Joe Ludwig and that lovely voice that you hear is my wife and co-host Caroline. How's it going? Hey hubs. It is allergy season and I can tell it's annoying. My eyes are itchy. My nose is itchy and runny. Wait, do you have the COVID? My throat is itchy. No, I have the allergies. How do you know? I got my Fauci ouchie. Daddy government set me up. My odds of getting the coronavirus are very slim. Banned. We're banned. You said all the keywords. The AI algorithms are. But Daddy ban us. Dewine loves me. <laughs> does he? Does he even know you exist? He doesn't. But he talks about his wife all the time, so it feels like I'm a part of their family because politicians care. Yay! He did give you a birthday present. He did. Oh, yeah, he did. He lifted all restrictions. Daddy DeWine says we can start having parties again the day before my birthday. I'm so excited. And this is one of those situations where time is a construct. Time is a construct. In podcast world. Everyone is invited to my birthday party in 2021. (laughs) But guess what? This podcast comes out after my birthday party. So... So sad. Too bad. Love you all. We're going to cram a thousand people into our backyard because we can. Screw the Rona. Really, it's going to be like 20 people tops. Not as crazy as our friends. No, not as crazy as the Christmas party that we go to almost every year. The Christmas party that's turning into a Christmas in July party. Well, it's Christmas in July this year. He said they're they're at least going to try to do their regular Christmas party this year, too, because they missed 2020. So our friends have a three-story condo downtown and it's three stories because it's basically a town home. The first floor is their living room and kitchen and a little patio. You have to go up a story to get there, right? You, yeah, you do have to go up a story just to get in there. I don't know if it's a story. It's a flight of stairs. It's a story. And then the next level is their bedroom and a master bath and maybe another porch? I don't think. No, no there's not. Okay, but it's the master bath and the master bedroom. And then you go up another other level and that's the like office slash guest room and a porch that's on their roof you forgot the mexican subway bathroom i'm sorry i forgot about the mexican subway tiled bathroom (laughs) and i've never been to mexico or a subway in mexico but i have been to mexico but have not been to a subway in mexico (laughs) but when he gave us the tour or when someone gave us the tour they're like you have to see this bathroom well that's the thing too like like, it might not have been them that gave us the tour. It might have been one of their friends. <laughs> because anytime you go to their place or their parents, it's, hey, welcome to their party. <laughs> not welcome to our party. Eventually you'll find them and you'll get to talk to them. But they cram a hundred plus people into this small space. Now, granted, People come and go. So there isn't like always a hundred people there. But he's, it is he's well connected. He is one. well connected and I'm not gonna is, say his name for privacy reasons, but maybe he'll come on the podcast. It's elbow to elbow people and it's so much fun because they'll do like four different specialty drinks. 
15 different kinds of beer in addition to like regular drinks and tons of delicious, delicious food because one of them loves cooking and the other one loves baking and they just go crazy for a week making stuff for their party. So this year we'll have a little more elbow room, though probably not a whole, whole lot because we can't fit a ton of people in the pool, but at least the backyard's bigger. So that's going to be an outdoor luau. I've always loved his parents' house. It is lots of fun. And that's where we were before we recorded this. It was a very tasty dinner. I'm very glad we're friends with them. They're really awesome people and they're really good at cooking food. They do like cook food, which I'm okay with. And what were we talking about? Allergy season. <laughs> <laughs> Allergy season. Okay. Oh, and then you were ruining the construct that this was Saturday night. But it's Memorial Day weekend. So, and you're off Tuesday, aren't you? Yes, I am off Tuesday. They let us log off early on Friday. Lucky. It was very nice to log off. All I had to do was walk up the stairs as opposed to drive 30 minutes. Yeah. 45 minutes or whatever it is. Where I was still in work crisis mode. We both get four day weekends. So that's nice. And then of course, Monday is Memorial Day. And then Tuesday is they are giving us the day off just like as a freebie because no, oh, there, there's a lot of reasons behind it. A lot, one of them is please don't quit. <laughs> they don't want people to quit. So because everyone is working from home and, you know, the management is aware that they are working long days. They're getting up early, working. They're working into the evening because it's convenient. Well, yeah. So instead of putting in exactly eight hours in the office, so you could get home and leave. It's well, normally I'm driving right now, so I guess I could log in. So you're working nine or 10 hour days, if not more. Sometimes more than that too, yeah. Yeah. Some people don't understand that just because you're working from home does not mean that you are accessible all hours of the day. Yeah. And I don't think they want that to be the case because burnout is a thing. Also, they figured, you know, the data showed that last year, a lot of people did not take their vacation. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily need to. But one, there wasn't anywhere to go because you're risking getting stuck somewhere if you decided to leave the state. And it was like, well, we'll just have a staycation. So maybe instead of taking a whole week off so we can go to the beach... I'll just take two days off and we can like go downtown for a day and see our city. But you really couldn't do that either. No, you couldn't. Because everything was closed. Yeah. Well, pretty much. Yeah. So in July, everyone panicked. July 2020, everyone panicked. And they're like, no one is taking their PTO. So we'll give them a day off. Oh, yeah. So it was 4th of July week. You had Monday off because it was 4th of July. Or it was either Monday or Friday was off for sure because of 4th of July. And then they gave you Wednesday off in hopes that everyone would use the PTO day. I think 4th of July was a Saturday, maybe. It rolled off to a Friday. And they gave us that the Wednesday before. Basically, they said you had to work a day between two days off in hopes that everyone would take a PTO day. Yeah, You did. Yeah. I mean, that was their goal was to get people to take PTO. They did because a lot of people were holding out that maybe the pandemic would get better in the fall sometime and then they could go on vacation. Maybe not the beach, but somewhere. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people were saving their vacation. And when you have like a lot of people and they have, you can't have them all take their PTO at the same time. Nothing would get done. Correct. (laughs) It's like when we're open the week between Christmas and New Year's and we can get some things done, but not a lot because all of our vendors have shut down for the week, for the year. So they decided to do that again, but for Memorial Day, they are actually giving it to us the Tuesday after Memorial Day, which is, I guess, surprising. I guess more people are using their PTO this year, but people not in the U.S., you know, they... Oh, yeah, they don't get Monday off. They don't get Monday off. That's probably why it's Tuesday. So I'm guessing a lot of people are taking Monday off if you're not in the States. based in the U.S. Yeah. So this is episode 14, and we have the same number of episodes as the show Firefly. Oh. <laughs> Are we going to get canceled? I don't know. Tune in next week. (laughs) And then there's the campaign that actually gets us a movie. Maybe. If you want a movie, make sure you send. What should people send? Oh, 
like there was didn't they send like subway se- subway sandwiches to get Chuck back on the air? They sent peanuts to get Jericho back on the air. Yeah, like I don't know why Jer- don't- Jericho is based in like Kansas. That's the one where there's like five or six nuclear bombs that go off. Oh yeah, like an EMP. No, these are nuclear bombs. Oh, I thought it acted like an EMP. I don't know. I never watched it. I think I might have like half watched one show with you once. No, maybe. you were thinking about an audiobook that I was listening to where like some one of our it was a fictional novel where one of our enemies launched two nuclear bombs up into the atmosphere and exploded them. Yeah, I'm going to need you to keep your post-apocalyptic stories to a minimum so I can keep them straight. <laughs> we have a great show planned for you all today. We are going to talk all about Father's Day because this episode is coming out the Thursday before Father's Day. So all you ladies and daughters and sons out there. Get out your mom's the boss mug. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be passive aggressive <laughs> on my day. <laughs> I hope you didn't forget about your dad because or husband because it is Father's Day and it's coming up quick. So let's dive in and get started. <laughs> What did we do this week? On Sunday, we determined that you needed to go to the grocery store to buy us food because we were running low on rations and we didn't want any of us to accidentally eat you out of hunger because we love you. I am the only one in this house that doesn't get hangry. You are. (laughs) I mean, I do get hangry, but not to the degree that you or the dogs or... Like, you just get a little grumpy. I get really, really grumpy when I'm tired and when I'm hungry. Mostly when I'm hungry. Sometimes when I'm tired, I just don't care anymore. And I'm like, whatever. You passive aggressively bought me Angry Orchard to try to kick me from drinking all this seltzer. (laughs) It didn't work. I bought more seltzer this week. (laughs) You know, the beer in the fridge, it has a a timer on it. I'm drinking beer from the fridge right now. You're drinking new beer from the fridge. Well, that's your fault. You told me to. You said I should drink this. I finally got to park in the garage again, so that was nice. And why did that happen? So I haven't been able to park in the garage since the baptism because we cleaned out the sunroom and the library, quote unquote. (laughs) Things got shifted around. So they looked clean, but that left the garage in a state of disarray. In our tiny house, when we have company over, the only solution is to just move large piles of crap around (laughs) into rooms that will not be occupied by guests yes (laughs) we had we had started to clean up from the baptisms after we got back from vacation i worked on planting more things and i well i worked on getting rid of the mulch and trying to clean up some of that stuff and then we got a fridge So we would have a replacement fridge for our fridge that's starting to go bad and it got worse. But then Joe spent Sunday night cleaning up the garage. I did. It was nice. Thank you, hubs. And so then after the kids went to bed, I came down to help you move some last minute things. And I'm like, was that? Did you just hear what I hear? There was a caw from across the street. And I was like, I have heard that caw before. It is a peacock. And because when my grandpa lived in Florida, we would visit him from time to time. And there used to be a peacock that lived in his condo complex. So you would hear the peacock every once in a while. And then when I was working at Camp Stony Brook, one of the summers, if not two of the summers, there was a pea hen that lived there until the pea hen had to get moved to a new home because people kept feeding her things that she wasn't supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. And she got a little aggressive because she wanted more food or something like that. Did she go to the farm? She went to an actual farm, not the farm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not the big farm in the sky. How do you know that? Because it's Girl Scouts. They wouldn't lie to us. Uh huh. So I was like, that sounds like a peacock. But it was just one cry. And I was like, that's weird. Who has a peacock on the west side of town? Let's continue to clean out the garage. They're not wild. They're not wild. At least not in Cincinnati. 
No. And we continue cleaning and I hear it again. And I was like, okay, that for sure is a peacock. And then I texted my mom and I texted Becky because I was like, hey, Becky, do you hear this thing too? And she said no because they were busy watching TV. And my mom said, yeah, I thought I heard a peacock one day when I was at your house, which I was like, hmm, okay, that's weird. (laughs) So we get inside and I get on Facebook and our friend who lives down the street from your brother, she says one street over. Yeah, just one street over. She's like, hey, if anyone on the west side is missing a peacock, it's on my roof. You can come get it whenever. (laughs) Sooner rather than later. (laughs) Yeah, because they're like trying to sleep and this peacock is calling for a mate, which good luck with that, buddy. (laughs) And they're like, hey, hey, what do we do? So fortunately, she made the post public. So I shared it to my mom's group. And I was like, hey, is anybody missing a peacock? It's on my friend's roof. (laughs) Which prompted a lot of people to compare it to a macaw. It's like, uh, no, definitely a peacock, not a parrot. (laughs) And then we learned that Phoenix the peacock lives nearby. And it was Phoenix. So Phoenix wandered a bit further from home than usual, probably eating some cicadas, though we're not really sure, and decided to sleep on our friend's roof for the night. And he woke up about 6 a.m because I heard him call from our bed. (laughs) I did not hear that, but I did hear the calls when we were in the garage. But yeah, we could hear it and that's like a street over. Yeah, peacocks are really loud. More than a straight over. They're also really pretty. I also learned that Pe- that Phoenix used to have a lady friend, oh. but then she went missing. So, And we learned a lot about peacocks because apparently you can domesticate them and they wander, but they have a really good sense of direction. Yes, yeah, so they stay close to home. So like usually what happens is when the sun starts to go down, if Phoenix has wandered too far away from home, he'll find a safe place to sleep and then he'll sleep And then he'll head home. So he just wandered a bit too far and decided that our friend's roof was a safe place to sleep. And apparently they fly? Yes, they do fly. Not well, though. No, penguins, ostriches, and emus are pretty much the only birds that don't fly to any capacity. Hmm. Because, like, chickens can fly a little bit. Non-domesticated turkeys can fly a little bit. Really? Yes. Turkeys that are in, like, slaughterhouse like we're going to turn you into dinner. Those turkeys are so big they can't fly. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So we have a peacock friend, I guess. We've lived here seven years. Yeah. In July, we'll, in July, we'll be celebrating seven years. We've never encountered a peacock or anything like that. Nope. And I would keep an eye out for him if I knew because I miss the peacock at my grandpa's condo. We had a peacock at band camp too. I guess they end up at camps. <laughs> I don't know. It was a higher ground Indiana, so it wasn't, you know, specifically a band camp, but there was a football field there, so it was convenient for band camp. Yeah. Because we practiced on the football field. The University of Cincinnati actually paid to put in a a turf field. Oh, fancy. Yes, because that was their practice field. Mm -hmm. But for those following at home, since we started this podcast, we've had monkeys invade and terrorize the West Side, according to the news. And now we have a peacock and the cicadas are also emerging. So I guess they are next. What is going on? I mean, the cicadas are a continuing thing. They've been around for a week and a half, two weeks at this point. They were quiet the last two days, though, because it was so dang on cold outside. (laughs) I guess we just don't have them by our house, but my brother's house. His house is covered. Which is a street over. He said it's really, really, really loud. Well, and we can see their roof from our roof, so it's not like we live super far apart either. He has more trees, though. He does. But I would think that Maryland's tree, it's a big oak tree. Yeah. I would think that there would be a bunch there. So maybe Zoe's eating them all, like she's trying to. I mean, she's for sure trying to eat them all. Or they just haven't decided to come out of our backyard yet. I don't know. I mean, Zoe stalks the grass. Even Clara does. I saw her munching on something. I'm assuming it was a cicada. Probably. Odds are high. But with her, it could just be grass. But she, I don't think she likes them because they're really, really, really loud. Mm-hmm. She has super hearing because she's a dog. 
Yeah. So I don't think she likes them. <laughs> so thus began another work week where an, I walked into an angry hornet's nest is one way to describe it. Those were those were my words. Those were your words. Yeah. We had a quality issue that was discovered and investigated poorly a few months ago and dismissed and was investigated thoroughly recently. Was it dismissed while you were on maternity leave? I'm not sure, mm. but I was not involved with any of the investigations, so mm. don't know. <laughs> but it was investigated thoroughly and determined, oh yeah, this is a bad issue. So we had to QC an entire product line, which included parts on hand, parts that were in orders to be assembled, and parts that had already been assembled. So that was interesting. It's a good way to start the week. That craziness lasted all week, right? It did last all week. I didn't get to leave work early on Friday because of it. And is the situation cleared up? Or For the most part, we're still determining how exactly we want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Or just if it does happen again, we know that we're going to find it. Mm. But yeah, that was fun. It was our whole department huddled together, checking parts. Well, your whole department left you on Friday. Yeah, we'll get there. So on Tuesday, I went on a walk with Hillary and the kids. We wandered around through Chevoa again, saw a lot of cicadas. They were very active and very loud. And they flew in front of Lily. She didn't really do anything with them, though. She was kind of, huh, okay, it's a thing. Well, today I found a cicada and I, in the grass by that bench mm -hmm. and I put it on my finger and she didn't really do anything. She tried to poke it. Well, because that's what Hillary taught her to do. <laughs> but she didn't like, she didn't seem weirded out or anything. I mean, she's not at a point where she doesn't like bugs yet. That comes later. The bug, it didn't move though. Yeah, she doesn't really, she's not really interested in things unless if they're moving. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just boring. We finally plugged in the fridge that we got the other week. After I deep cleaned it on my lunch break. Yep. I put the doors on. I'm not sure if they're on properly because they seem a little crooked, but it seals just fine. So we're probably good. <laughs> the fridge does turn off. Doesn't just run continuously. Things are staying frozen and cold. So we trust this fridge more than the other fridge so we can breathe a little sigh of relief. Yes. Yeah. And we called a guy to get rid of the other fridge and he never showed up. Yeah, I called him on Thursday. Maybe I'll try to call him again on Tuesday, or we'll just find a new guy to call. So then on Wednesday, it was kind of cold, and was it rainy? I feel like it was rainy. No, I don't think it was rainy yet on Wednesday. That was the day I got Chick-fil-A, right? Yes. So it was rainy. Oh, yeah, it was rainy on Wednesday. But it wasn't cold. It was just rainy. I don't know these things. I don't go outside. <laughs> they didn't even ring the doorbell. They just put it on the little table out there. That's what they do now. It's contactless. You don't have to interact with people unless if you want to. Usually they knock, though, when you order DoorDash. Not always. What? For the record, I told you they were on the way, so you knew that they were close. I was cleaning the library and the basement at that point. And I assumed that Clara and Zoe would let me know when someone was on our porch. <laughs> they, Only when it's convenient to them. Spoilers. They did not let me know. So, well, when I ordered the DoorDash order, it said 105. It was going to be there 105. I think it showed up at like 12. 50. Yeah, I mean, that happens a lot, too, especially with big places. So I was done cleaning and it was 105 or something. It was like 110. I'm like, maybe I should check the website. And I'm like, it doesn't say I have a delivery driver. So I refresh. No, it doesn't say. I'm like, hmm. I should have texted you that your food was there. I thought you were already eating it. Also, I was a little mad at you because I wanted to order food, but did not want to justify the delivery price. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The, the price, you get the fee, you got the tip, but I guess that's the... That's, it's more expensive than if you order it there. I don't think you can do the combos either. 
For um, Chick-fil-A at least. Yeah, I wanted Chick-fil-A one day and I asked my coworker whether or not he was going out for lunch and if he was, where he was going. And he listed off two places, one of which was Chick-fil-A. And I said, hey, I will give you $10 and tell you what to order if you go to Chick-fil-A. And he said, okay. And I recreated my order in DoorDash. And even without the fees, it was going to be more expensive. So like it was like four forty nine. I'm making up numbers. It was like four forty nine for the sandwich if you got it at Chick fil A, but it was gonna be like five oh nine if I ordered the sandwich online. So they had a markup on their prices. Hmm. I mean it's not surprising. I mean with the pandemic, DoorDash went got extremely popular. Yeah, so I'm slaving away at work, going crazy, and I get this notification, Hey, Chick fil A confirmed your order. It'll be there soon. It's like <laughs> Oh, Joe ordered Oh, Joe ordered himself food. Okay. So I survived work on Wednesday, but then Wednesday afternoon at work, I get a phone call that our lawnmower is ready. And I was like, yay, I don't have to borrow a lawnmower now. So I, Thursday morning, the plan is to go to mom's house after the kids wake up so I can start cleaning my stuff out of her house. I was like, well, I'll go pick up the lawnmower before. So I go to pick up the lawnmower. I pay. He's about to load it into the car and then was like, wait. We only did half the service, apparently. Can you wait 10 minutes so I can finish this up? (laughs) Two kids in the back of the van. Two kids in the back of the van. As long as they both stay quiet, yeah, I can hang out here. (laughs) Fortunately, they both cooperated. I think I redid Lily's hair while we were in the van. Well, she was in the van, so that worked out. Elliot fell asleep. He finished up the stuff for the lawnmower, and we put it in the back of the van. Apparently, he was in a hurry. He was in a hurry. I think he spilled some gas in the process. You think? Ah, yeah. (laughs) Because he puts the lawnmower in the van, and I notice it smells like gas fumes. So I'm like, let's just open up all the windows. (laughs) It's a five minute drive home. We'll be fine. So we plop the lawnmower in the garage and I'm like, bye, Joe. You close the garage door. Well, you don't tell me that it smells like gas. It's not just a little gas. He poured like the entire container on it or something. There's a lot of gas. It's still sitting on the front porch. (laughs) I think it smells better. It should. So Joe cracked the garage door. He didn't die. I almost passed out. I'm I'm working in the basement because the way our house is set up, the, the door to the basement is in the garage. So all the fumes from the lawnmower naturally went down because the basement is the lowest point where i'm working so i'm like working and i'm like oh that smells funny and i'm typing and like that smells funny why am i why does it smell like gas <laughs> what so i run up and i'm like the lawnmower so i'm like whatever i'm just gonna crack the garage door and i guess it helped a little bit but i got lightheaded a little you know you know i was trying to work i was really i was in the zone and i'm like working and i'm like that smells weird um, but i'm gonna continue working i didn't think anything of it until oh yeah that that's really strong that's that's weird. Yeah. So we guess we can talk about this now. My mother is moving. They are building a new house, but they don't know exactly when construction is going to start. And their real estate agent wants their house on the market yesterday because the market's really, really hot right now if you are selling your house. And I still have a ton of stuff at her house. Not like a ton, a ton of stuff, but I do have some belongings at her house that need to be organized. Most of which I think can be gotten rid of. Hopefully. Yes. So we're super excited for them. It's going to be lots of fun. Mom hasn't built a house before. Larry has never lived in a new house before. So it's going to be a new frontier. And they're moving into a land dominium setup. So they don't have to take care of any of their yard unless if they like super want to. But I was like, just come to our house and you can take care of our yard if you want to. And for the most part, it's going to be older people so they can make some new old people friends. I love you, mom, because I know that you're listening to this. Make some new old people friends. It'll be great. (laughs) (laughs) I spent the day with the kids organizing my stuff in mom's basement, going through boxes, figuring out what we could get rid of and what we should probably keep and what's going to come here and what's going to stay in storage and corralling Lily. (laughs) Oh, I don't think I told you this. So, of course, since it's a basement, it is not childproof at all. And Larry's workshop is down there. 
There are chemicals everywhere. She didn't mess with any of that stuff, though. No, Lily wanted to poke the buttons on the hot water heater. What? So she might have turned their hot water heater off at some point, but then turned it back on. She for sure turned off the furnace. (laughs) The furnace kicked on because it was hot out. So the AC kicked on and Lily was like, ooh, a light switch right at my level. Off. Oh, boy. On. (laughs) And I was like, oh, boy, Lily, let's not touch that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. So after we came upstairs for lunch slash a snack, I was like, hey, Larry, maybe check the furnace and the hot water heater to make sure that they're running properly so you don't you don't get screwed out of hot water in the morning. <laughs> Thanks to the adorableness that is Lily. Poor Lily. Or poor Larry and yeah. your mom. Yeah. So I managed to make it through. But what we thought was everything in the basement. Mom said she found another box that I'm going to have to go through. There's always another box. <laughs> There always is. And then I get to start cleaning out my bedroom. (laughs) Oof. That's going to be fun. For the most part, everything's out of it. It's been seven years. (laughs) But it's been a while since I've looked in any of those drawers. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll get your house cleaned out, Mom. I promise. And I make fun of Caroline, but I am equally as guilty at leaving stuff behind at my parents' house. Yeah. And if it's not at your parents' house, it's in boxes in our basement that I need you to go through so we can see if we can get rid of some things to condense them because like I was getting rid of college notes I was like these don't really make sense without the textbooks or the powerpoints or whatever else it was that I had with them If I have to relearn this stuff, I'll just teach myself on the internet. Goodbye notes. Here are notepads that Lily can use to color. I don't have any notes. All my notes were digital, pretty sure. Uh, I strongly recall buying notebooks with you every semester. You'd get like a big notebook that had three or five sections in it. So all of your notes would be in one notepad. I don't think I kept any of that, though. We will find out. So at some point, we're going to have to go through this all over again with your parents. But who knows when exactly that will be. It might be a while. That brings us to Friday, right? Yes, where like everyone abandoned me at work. Because it's a holiday weekend, a lot of people take off Friday or Thursday and Friday, which a lot of the people in my department did. So During a crisis. During a crisis. Well, my boss had tickets to fly to Dallas. Those are kind of hard to reschedule. We went from my boss, three full-time employees, and two co-ops down to two full-time employees and one co-op working on this crisis. Fortunately, at that point, though, a lot of the work had gotten done. There wasn't as much stuff that we needed to do, but we didn't have as many people to do it. So everything took a little bit longer. Uh And part of what we had to do required testing and the test, the tests took longer than it took to check the parts in the first place to see whether or not they were good. And I had to make sure that nobody else was trying to test something on the equipment when I wanted to test something. For the most part, I got the equipment all to myself, but there was somebody else who was attempting to test stuff that kept failing while I was working. So it rained off and on on Friday again, which really cooled things off. That's an understatement. Yeah. It poured on and off on Friday. Yeah. So after I was finally able to get away from the office, I go to pick up the kids and we decide, hey, let's try to go to a brewery, but Joe will scope it out first. And then I'll either come up with the kids or I'll just head home with kids. So I hang out at your parents' house for a bit, giving you some lead time to get there while it is pouring down rain or super sunny. The weather was very bipolar. It wasn't sunny, but it wasn't raining until I got... Uh, past my parents, past your mom's house yeah. on North Bend. Man- we managed to get the kids in the car and I'm starting to get out of your parents' neighborhood and then it's like torrential downpour. So I pull over to the side of the road because I'm still in the neighborhood and I call you and you don't answer. And I'm like, well, 50-50 shot. I guess I'll start heading towards the brewery. Continue to head towards the brewery. You were texting me, but I couldn't read any of the texts. I get to a stoplight and I call you and I still don't have an answer. I'm like, Okay, these text messages that I can now read because I'm at a red light say I should turn around. 
Well, there was nowhere to sit. Yeah, because you had finally been able to get in the door. Brink is a nice place, but it has a tiny indoor area to sit. Yeah. And with social distancing, it's even worse. Yeah. Soon there will be room for us, maybe. I don't know. I don't think the social distancing is going away. Well, the good news is that they own the space that is next to their brewery now. The bad news is that there isn't really a good way for them to merge the two spaces together because their brew deck and their cooler... (laughs) is along the wall that combines the two spaces. And their electrical panel is right where they would want to put a door. So they're not quite sure what that's going to end up looking like yet. The kids and myself headed home and Joe was like, I'm getting tacos. To which I said, yay! No, you are grumpy. I was very grumpy because I was hungry, but (laughs) I was happy about the tacos. First I said, I want Dewey's Pizza. So I, I called them and they're like, like, Dewey's Pizza, it's hour and 30 minute wait. And I'm like, screw that. I don't want to get eaten when I get home. So I decided to, I was in my car at this point and it was pouring down rain. I'm like, well, the taco place is right there. I can see it. I'll just run in and see what the wait is. Yummy, yummy taco. What is this place called? I'm terrible at pronouncing it. It's, it's something Garcia. But it's super authentic. And it's really, really, really good. And I get the chicken tacos. You get shrimp tacos. Correct. And it comes with fried rice and refried beans. So good. And it's pretty reasonable in price. And no one was in there. Yeah, that one, that location's pretty much always been empty anytime I go visit. Or there'll be like maybe two people ahead of me in line. Yeah, and it's like a kind of like a chip set up where no. all the food is in front of you it's well it's like they've got like a line yeah they have a system. line they have an assembly line so but, they, they make it in front of you but it's not like you tell them what to put on it they are they're going off the ticket right and but they do it in front of you and they don't do it in the kitchen in the back they make my shrimp in the kitchen in the back but, I can but that's see because it. they make it fresh but i can see it one of the reasons why i like to get shrimp but it's really yummy the original place is by my work and we used to go there for Taco Tuesdays because it was dollar tacos until everyone else discovered that they were amazing and delicious. And then we didn't have time to go there for Taco Tuesdays anymore. Because I was so busy. So busy. Is it But still- even then it's, well... I haven't been to the one by work in a little while, but at least pre-pandemic, anytime I went there for lunch, you were waiting in line at least five minutes before you could place your order. And then who knows when you get the order finally. Yeah, it'd probably be another five or ten minutes until I'd get my order. That's not too bad. Ten minute wait? No. Well, because they make everything right in front. They, they make everything right there. It's a lot of it's all prepped. So we got some yummy, yummy tacos. And you got some okay crawlers. But the bartender was kind of pushy, so. Yeah, they there was no one behind me and he's like and i'm like yeah i haven't been here in a while i'm the only one in a mask by the way there's no one in a mask I'm like i don't know what the rules are yeah we're in I, this I, kind of wishy-washy phase uh period of do i have to wear a mask do i not have to wear a mask the orders don't lift until the second yeah well, what but do we do not even the workers were and no one's sitting down i mean with the, if you're sitting down you don't have to wear a mask anyway but uh, but yeah i'm the only one in a mask and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And he's, and I'm like, I haven't been here in a while and your menu keeps changing. He's like, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. Tell me about your beer. Do you have Father G's? I like that one. He's like, no, we don't. We have the honey, but we don't. It's on deck for brewing. And then the other guy's like, yeah, we'll brew it eventually. And I'm like, well, I like really like that one. <laughs> I don't know what any of these other things are. And all I read are New England IPA, New England IPA, New England IPA. England IPA. They do have a lot of IPAs. IPA, IPA, IPA. And I read Moosey. I like that one. So I'm like, I'll take a, I'm going to do a couple of crawlers. And the crawlers are smaller than a growler. A growler is a glass jug. A growler is a gallon. 64 ounces. Yep. Yeah. A crawler is a half gallon or a liter, 32 ounces. Yeah. So I'm getting the crawlers, the smaller one. And it's a way to get, it's a way to support breweries that don't do distribution. Except now Brink does do distribution through a contract brewing thing. They do do distribution. And and, and what, what are two of the beers that you can get through this? 
Musi and Hold the Rain. But we can compare now. We can do a taste test. Ooh, we have made this a thing now. Those are the two that I got because those are the two that I'm familiar with. And I'm not really an IPA person. That's just not my thing. It can be your thing. It's not my thing. Yeah, so. I'm sure they make great IPAs. It continued to rain and rain and rain and got very, very cold outside. So we actually like put Elliot in pajamas instead of just a onesie to bed because lately it's been so warm that we've just been like, here, have a onesie. Footy pajamas are for squares, even though they make you look adorable. Gosh, I could, like I think I feel like a week ago it was pushing ninety degrees. It was. It was ridiculous. But last night our our heat turned on a lot. <laughs> so this brings us to Saturday morning, where Elliot woke up at four forty-five. Because he loves us and cares about us and wants to spend more time with us. (laughs) That's one way to put it. Yeah. He was a party animal and did not want to go back to sleep. So I tried to put him to bed and then we switched and I might have fallen asleep. I might not have. And I look at the monitor and I'm like, well, Elliot's still not in bed. Let me see if Joe wants to swap off and maybe I can get Elliot to finally go to bed. Well, wait, nobody's in Elliot's room. Oh, you guys are both laying on the floor in the living room and Elliot was almost asleep. So I finally got him to sleep a little bit before six. I don't remember that. I don't remember (laughs) being on the floor. (laughs) You were both laying on the floor, just chilling, having some bro time. And so then I get to get into bed about six. I convince you to come back up to bed and stop sleeping on the floor. I don't know. I was half asleep at this point. I remember walking upstairs. I don't remember. I mean, now I guess I do, but... Sleepy Joey doesn't remember things well. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> oh, this takes me back. In college, when we would hang out, I'd stay at your house so late you'd fall asleep. Late? Like 11 o'clock? Yeah, it was like 11 o'clock. And so I'd have to like... we And you'd fall asleep in the basement. So I would have to convince Sleepy Joey to get into bed. Sometimes I had to drive you home. No. Later. Not if you were sleepy. I usually didn't let you drive me home. Or I would have just driven your car to my house and then driven it back in the morning. But I would have to convince Sleepy Joey to go upstairs into the kitchen and then upstairs into your bedroom. And I would get a text in the morning. How did I get into bed? (laughs) As I would spend like 10 minutes convincing you to get into bed. Like I would be talking to you. No memory of it. So that'll be fun when the kids pick up that trait. So Lily woke up about 6.50 because she also loves us and wants to spend time with us. It's a competition now. Yeah. That's what it's turned into. And I am losing sleep. (laughs) I am not the winner in this situation. Nope. So we took turns getting ready for the day while Lily was watching 101 Dalmatians. As she does. As she does every Saturday morning. It's a thing. (laughs) So because we decided that we should start our own donut trail adventure. So that was interesting. I just wanted donuts and coffee and the Dunkin Donuts up the street is closed. It's sometimes it's closed and sometimes it's open, but they're in the middle of remodeling. I think they're closed for for good for for like the time being. I don't know. I don't know what the situation is for the Duncan. So I'm like, Stephen and Hillary really recommended this Jupiter Donuts thing. When they we said did- it looked like a coffee shop and we like coffee. And it has like a coffee shop feel. And so I'm like, okay, that sounds good. We left at like... N- it was like 10. 930. Yeah, maybe it was like 930. We left like way later than one should. It was 930 because we got there a little after 10. I was, I mean, I was pretty proud of how quickly we got out of the house. Yeah, with like having woken up with no plan to leave the house we did really good i passively mentioned donuts at like six o'clock and then that yeah we were going after you said that so lily and myself had to have a pre-breakfast before we went to go get breakfast i did not know that rule at the time it was a quick pre-breakfast oh quick is relative but it's not like i could just run up to jupiter donuts and come back yeah it's like a half hour trip well that's because because it's in Butler County and we live in Hamilton County and yay. But we asked Stephen and Hillary if they wanted any donuts and they of course said yes please all of the donuts. And hey they're getting ready to go on a walk with the dogs or with dog. 
just dog. So we get the donuts. We start heading back to their house and they're like, well, actually, we could probably go on a walk with you. So we meet them at their house. We hang out for a bit. Then we eat some donuts, like more than half of the donuts that we brought because we bought a dozen. And then we go on a nice long walk where we see lots of cicadas. Well, no, we don't see lots of cicadas. Well, no, we see lots of cicadas. We don't hear lots of cicadas because it is cold outside. We see the shells. We see the shells. I see some hanging out on the trees. You didn't really see those, though, but they were everywhere. So we were going to visit the pool down the street and get a membership. But the high was 59 on Saturday which is not okay for swimming is it june in two days like what is going on it is june in two days we went to a pool party today and we were gonna play rock paper scissors to see who had to get in the pool with lily but fortunately none of us had to get in the pool with lily because no one got in the pool because it was too cold but the high today was like 63 so that was better tomorrow it's supposed to be like 70 75 or something tomorrow it's supposed to be 74 seven degrees warmer than today. That's better, I guess. <laughs> it's still not like... That's like April weather. It's still not like let's super go swimming weather. Yeah. What is this nonsense? Yeah. But so then after we got back from our walks, I made a grocery run and I picked up some crawlers from West Side. We're drinking two of them. We are. Between the two of us. We are. One of them's already gone. But before we get to that, it is time to hear what is bugging Caroline and Children's TV this week. Yep. So we haven't been watching a lot of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse this week, or if we have, I haven't been paying attention as much, but I'm pretty sure we just haven't been watching as much because we've been doing other things with Lily. So if anything, we've just been listening to the hot dog song and then going to bed. But like today we did zero Mickey Mouse Clubhouse things and just said, okay, Lily, let's go to bed. You're seeing purple elephants. They're dancing all around you. It is time to go to sleep. But we have been watching Tangled, which leads me to the very troublesome character of Mother Gothel. So, like, I know Mother Gothel is not a good character because she kidnaps Rapunzel and holds her hostage because magic hair and I want to be young forever. She's the bad guy. She is. But she's like a super subtle toxic that I'm kind of not okay with because it's hard to tell that she's toxic if you don't know. So, like, if she, I'm hoping she doesn't have an influence on small children because she's like, oh, Oh, Rapunzel, you're looking a little chubby. And then Rapunzel gets all offended and she's like, ha ha ha, I'm only kidding. Take a joke. Like that wasn't a joke. Or like she always has to win. She's like, I have a surprise for you. And Rapunzel's like, I have a surprise for you too. And she's like, well, mine is bigger. The thing that I do has to be way more impressive and important than the thing that you do, because I'm going to be constantly putting you down in these little ways. And I'm just not cool with that. But isn't that like high school girl? It is like a very catty thing that girls do sometimes. And it's a very toxic trait. Guys like, are in your face. If I'm mad at you, I'm going to punch you. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. So like you went to an all boys high school. I went to a co-ed high school and there were fights like every other day because it was a very big school too. So there's a ton of people, but very rarely would there be a girl fight. But when there was a girl fight, there would be blood on the lockers, blood on the floor, 10 other people would jump in because when girls resort to fisticuffs, nothing gets hold, held back. It's hold my earrings, hold my purse. I'm going to beat the crap out of this girl. And yeah, it's normally it's subtle jabs. It's like emotional. Yes. It's a lot of emotional. That, that's the stereotype, at least. Guys are more physical. I'm going to just punch punch you in the face, and that's it. The conflict's resolved. Girls are, I'm going to jab you in the side of the ribs for five years until you break. Eh, kind of. <laughs> 
That's my experience, at least. Yeah, but That's I'm my just, impression. Like, I don't like her as a person, and I know that I'm not supposed to like her as a person. She's ruined "Mother Knows Best" for me because her whole song "Mother Knows Best" is I'm gonna lie to you about what the world is like, and don't question anything that I say because I know best. And then she says, "Getting kind of chubby," and I'm like, "Well, if, if Rapunzel is not allowed to leave her tower, she's really, really fit." Yeah, and she doesn't have any exercise equipment. Nope, other than her magic hair that glows when she sings. I guess you have to brush the hair, so I guess that's exercise in the arms. Carrying it around, whipping it around. What about leg day? Yeah. I'm not a workout person. Apparently leg day is a thing. Bros don't let bros forget about leg day. That's a very old meme. Yeah, apparently that's a thing. Prehistoric days of the internet, like four years ago. I mean, we were locked up for a pandemic for... 15 days to slow the spread and I guess 15 days plus to slow the spread and I gained weight. Lots of people gained weight because they closed the gyms and all this stuff for better or for worse and people gained weight but Rapunzel doesn't gain weight. Nope. But then Mother Gotho comes, sings her sing song and says, you're getting kind of chubby. But I'm just saying this because I love you like that. That's not how this works. So what are we drinking tonight? I see you have an adult beverage and a very passive aggressive glass. Do you want to explain what the glass is? So I am currently drinking West Side Brewing's ESB, which is an extra special bitter in my very appropriate Mom's the Boss mug. Yeah. This ESB is 5.2% and has 35 IBUs. The description is a traditional English style ale. Our extra special bitter is burnished copper in color. Toasty malt flavors of toffee and caramel are met with firm bitterness, making for a refined, well-balanced brew. It's a little bitter. I would say that it's like a caramel color and it's really yummy. So what are you drinking, hubby? I finished off the growler of Westside Brewing's 513 Pale Ale. It is 5 Point one three percent ABV, 46 IBU. And the description is, To celebrate our fine city of Cincinnati, we brewed up this pale ale using five different hops, one yeast, and three types of malted barley. Pale orange with a white head, the use of Cascade, Centennial, Citra, Comet, and Calubus hops gives balanced aromas and flavor notes of grapefruit, citrus, and piney darkness. Lift one and toast to the Queen City. And just for reference, 513 is the area code for most of Cincinnati. So that's why they called it 513. But it's good. It's tasty. I would drink it. I like it. Yeah, I don't know if I would pay money to drink it. It's a little more hoppy than what you normally drink. Yeah, I like the multi beers Yeah, more so than the... But it's good. I'm glad you got it. I'm sure it would also taste good in my mom's The Boss mug. I'm drinking my beer in the Dad Established 2019 pint glass, which is better than your mom's glass. Do I need to get out my mom where the O is a mini head wine glass that's almost as big as my head? <laughs> you do have one of those, don't you? I do. <laughs> I like it. So cheers to the weekend and Lord help us in the week ahead because starting tomorrow, we are going to have to do it all over again. Except it's a holiday weekend, so we get more weekend. Get more days off, yeah. More crazy adventures are ahead, and we will make sure to share them with you each week right here on the Craft Parenting Podcast. So this week, in lieu of Father's Day, coming up on Sunday, we are talking all about Father's Day, the history behind it, and maybe even some awesome gift ideas for all those who were procrastinating. I haven't read these gift ideas yet, so I'm super stoked. (laughs) So let's dig into the history of Father's Day. The first Father's Day was celebrated June 19th, 1910, but it wasn't made an official holiday until after 1972 which for the record is 58 years after Mother's Day became official. So we got 58 years on you. But continuing on. According to your own research, the person who created Mother's Day regretted it. I don't care. (laughs) Not a competition. (laughs) 
<laughs> we'll get into the re- one of the reasons for the discrepancy in when these things were started later. So the first event explicitly in honor of fathers was on July 5th, 1908 in West Virginia. It was a Sunday sermon in memory of the 362 men that had died in a coal mining explosion in December. So like super cheery, happy stuff. The next year in Spokane, Washington, a woman named Sonora Smart Dodd tried to establish an official Father's Day and was able to get enough support to have the state of Washington make it an official holiday where it was celebrated June 19, 1910. The holiday spread slowly but still got national attention. In 1916, President Wilson honored the day, and in 1924, President Calvin Coolidge urged state governments to observe Father's Day, and today it is celebrated the third Sunday in June. In other countries, Father's Day is celebrated on St. Joseph's Day, which is March 19th, and is a Catholic holiday. So, there are a few theories and stories as to why Father's Day was slow to spread. Florists said that fathers weren't as sentimental, so it was harder to get them things. And one historian wrote that men, quote, scoffed at the holiday sentimental attempts to domesticate manliness with flowers and gift giving, or they derided the proliferation of such holidays as a commercial gimmick to sell more products, often paid for by the father himself, end quote. Well, when the father is the only person working... And making the money, I guess technically it's his money. Yeah, like back in like the 40s, like women typically didn't work outside of the house, so they didn't have any income. So yeah, they're going to be spending your money. Yeah, I mean, up until they had kids, they didn't work. Yeah, so to continue on. During the 20s and 30s, there were attempts to make parents stay instead of both Mother's and Father's Day because, quote, both parents should be loved and respected together, end quote. The Great Depression ruined those plans because struggling retailers attempted to make Father's Day a second Christmas by promoting neckties, hats, socks, and other gifts for father. And with World War II, they argued that Father's Day was a way to honor the troops and the war effort. So like patriotism, you should do this thing because you're not a patriot if you don't. So this turned Father's Day into a national institution, even though it was not yet a national holiday. President Nixon finally made Father's Day a national holiday in 1972. For some reason, they mentioned that it was while he was trying to like campaign for re-election. So maybe it was like he wanted more votes. I don't know. But he's the one that officially signed it in. According to the National Retail Federation, U.S. consumers are expected to spend more than $20.1 billion on gifts and other items for Father's Day this year, a record high. Survey respondents indicated they plan to spend an average of $174 on Father's Day items or $26 more than last year, and a record high for the survey. About half. 47% of the increase comes from spending more on special outings, clothing, and consumer electronics. So is this how much money I'm supposed to spend on you? The the kids are going to like make you a card or something. (laughs) Okay. 75% of Americans surveyed plan to celebrate the fathers, husbands, and other paternal figures in their life this Father's Day, which is consistent with previous years. So the the same amount of people are going to celebrate Father's Day, but they are spending more, supposedly, or they are going to plan on spending more. And just a thought, but could it be that consumers' spending habits are the same for Father's Day, but because of inflation, they are spending more money? So they're spending the same amount on the same goods and services? Yeah. I mean, it could be because we're seeing the price of a lot of things go up. Or maybe perhaps the stimmy money is burning a hole in people's pockets and they feel like they can spend more money because of it. Well, how else are you going to stimulate the economy? Spend, spend, spend. I mean, that's how businesses grow. Ideally, you want the small business to grow, not the giant corporation. But I just want to say that they are estimating that $20 billion is going to get spent on fathers this year. And it was $25 billion for mothers. So Mothers expect more, I guess. We're worth more. Oh. Oh. Kind of a personal story. Growing up, Father's Day was always spent at, and get ready for this, my uncle's mom and dad's house. So Uncle Kevin. His parents. (laughs) My Uncle Kevin's mom and dad's house, Bob and Dorothy. And this isn't some screwy way of saying your grandparents. I'm not related to these people. (laughs) You are not blood related to these people. (laughs) Yeah, so it's my aunt, who's my dad's sister, 
husband. So he's my uncle by marriage. So we would go over Bob and Dorothy's house every Father's Day. And all of my cousins were there. And my oma and opa, so my dad's mom and dad were there. And my siblings were there as well. And also my cousins, aunt and uncle were there. So their cousins as well. And they would grill hamburgers and hot dogs, corn in the, corn in the cob, stuff like that. And without fail, somehow the hose would get turned on or or someone would bring a squirt gun and super soakers were, were really popular at this point in the 90s, early 2000s. So we had lots of fun with that. And my cousin's uncle would usually be the one who instigated the water fight somehow. Is this the same uncle that you spent yes. a night with in a cabin <laughs> and you guys didn't know you were st- sleeping in the same cabin until the next morning? Yes. <laughs> Okay, just checking. Yes, that is the same one. But he would be the instigator. Maybe he would tell a different story, but... I doubt it. (laughs) He likes to do stuff like that, and he knows it. So we had a ton of fun, even when we weren't getting wet. The downstairs had a pool table and lots of stuff to play with. And I always remember that they had a hot tub inside the house. That's interesting. Yeah, they had like a room, like off to the side. I guess it was kind of, I guess it was like a bathroom, but I don't know. Maybe it wasn't a hot tub. Maybe it was just a jacuzzi tub? It was de- definitely had bubbles. I don't know if it was a hot tub. Now that I'm thinking about this, maybe it didn't, doesn't make sense to have a hot tub inside. I have never been to their house. Like, I've not been to that house, so I do not know. I only was at their condo. No, I remember the adults branding it as a hot tub. So I don't think it was a jacuzzi because we all went in there with our bathing suits. I don't know. Yeah, that was our Father's Day tradition as far back as I can remember. Up until high school, I vaguely remember driving to Bob and Dorothy's one year, which meant that at the very least I was a sophomore in high school. But that must have been the final Father's Day that they hosted because they moved to a condo not not long after that. Mm -hmm. And once they moved, they didn't host Father's Day anymore. Well, that space was necessarily conducive to it no they started to have health issues at that point too that's what my family usually did on father's day and growing up it was pretty typical to see bob and dorothy you guys you guys did like a lot of blended family stuff yeah growing up we did a lot of blended family stuff as you said, at uh, birthday parties. So my cousins had a birthday party celebration with the family. They were all there as well because it was a small family. I mean, my uncle only had one brother. My dad only has one sister. So it was just easier to have everyone there. It's a bit cheaper too, but... It's nice when you can get a family together. Yeah, so growing up, I saw a lot of a lot of them, even though it's kind of weird. I mean, they're not technically family, but my mom always said that I would hug them goodbye at these birthday parties because I considered them as, as my grandparents, too. My third set of grandparents. Yeah, so what am I supposed to buy you for Father's Day? I'm assuming it's me going to a yarn store? Or a craft store of some kind? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. <laughs> so, you know, the Flintstones, the intro in the Flintstones when they go to the... the Yeah, like the Sonic that's not a Sonic. The drive-in diner. Yeah, the drive-in diner. I guess in the movie, they were in rollerblades. The, yeah, but I don't know if they were like that on the cartoon. I remember Rosie O'Donnell in rollerblades. Yeah. <laughs> Which is mind-blending because I don't really remember that movie at all. But anyway, the live action movie rather not the car in the cartoon you know if they pull up to the restaurant and you order this big it's like a rack of ribs that's bigger than me yeah and then the car tops over because it's so heavy yeah that's what you need to get me just meat so i can grill it okay so we need to have grill outs uh we need to have a huge grill out big thing gonna be great how many people are we inviting to this grill out all of the people i mean daddy dewine says we can have as many people over now as we want so well if he's giving us permission then at least a thousand i think you already bought ribs i do have ribs downstairs but we typically throw those in the crock pot i know i know it's sad. They, they taste really good, though, when we do that. That's typically good for four people, so. Yeah, so grill outs are good. That's typically what I associate Father's Day with, just because of my history. Pool parties, if you can swing it, you know someone with a pool. <laughs> go crash. On your way into their house or just say, hey, I'm coming over today. Or growing up, we had a pool pass to Phillips Swim Club, and we would go there, too. Not on Father's Day, but it was an option for a pool party. 
Yeah. Like maybe the Saturday before. Uh, family get togethers, that's important, I feel like. Just being with the family, extended family included. Mm -hmm. The last couple of Father's Days, I said I've wanted to go shooting at a gun range. This has been a thing that you've said. <laughs> I don't know if we will make it happen this year or not. I'll let you know in two weeks when Father's Day actually happens. <laughs> but I always tend to get my dad a Home Depot gift card. I know it's not super original, but it, it gives him an excuse to buy tools. It does. Not that he needs an excuse to buy tools, but... And Lily and Elliot, if you are listening to this, do not give me a tie because I won't wear it. You barely wear pants. <laughs> Work from home life got me like, what What are clothes? At this pool party that we went to today, the first thing I said uh, to the hosts were, um, man, this is the first time I, I wore pants since February 2020. <laughs> yep. And it's not true. I mean, I've gone out. But... You've dressed up fancy a few times too. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely our wardrobe has leaned more towards casual than formal these days. Okay, so I think I can go with that. I technically, I did buy you a super dad mug. I think I told you that was part of your father's day present even though i got you that like two months ago it is very nice it's wide versus tall mm -hmm. a lot of my mugs are tall yeah so it's nice and you are a super dad i feel super drinking out of it every, <laughs> every night when i drink my tea that's good and you're currently wearing your daddy shark shirt yes i do have a daddy shark shirt and i have a you have world's best dad uh world's best dog dad too yes oh, so you have no you have best dad ever and best dog dad ever and you have a proud dad of a totally awesome daughter and yes she did buy me the shirt mm -hmm. you don't wear that <laughs> shirt enough i guess i don't <laughs> thanks for calling me out on that love you lily says she spent good money on that shirt with mommy's credit card i guess she was born at that point yeah it was her first christmas oh yeah but she got it for me for christmas yeah because you wore your best dog dad ever shirt at the hospital. It was either before she was born or right after she was born. And people were like, you need a best dad ever shirt. And he's like, and you're like, yeah, but I have to earn it. <laughs> It was when we went to Children's Hospital to follow up on her, on her issues. Yeah. And they're like, you need a best dad ever shirt, not best dog dad. Yeah. Someone in the elevator called me out. Yeah. It was pretty funny. It's like, yeah, I have to earn it. <laughs> I think you said that. I might have. That does sound like a thing <laughs> that I would do with love. So that's all about Father's Day. <laughs> But it's time for your favorite segment of the show. Yay. It is time for Joe's dad joke of the week. Woohoo. Please make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready for this? Listeners, are you ready for this? <sighs> Lay it on me. All right. I made some fish tacos. They just ignored them and swam away. <laughs> but, um, I actually did look for the the rim, the rim shot mm -hmm. sound effect and the sound library that I subscribed to. Yeah. And I couldn't find it. On. Maybe it's listed as badumptis. Badumptis. Here, there, I just made it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's called a rim shot. Yeah, I know it's a rim shot, but I'm just being silly. Sillier than your dad joke. That does it for this week's show. Thank you so much for listening. We want to hear from you. If you have ideas for a show topic, if you have comments about a previous show, maybe you really liked it or you learned something new or perhaps you didn't really like it. Don't be a mother gothel. <laughs> Just let us know. There are many ways to get in touch with us. You can send us an email at craftparentingpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Craft Parenting Podcast to get updates on when episodes have dropped, see pictures of our adorable kids, and more. If you like what you hear, please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. Make sure to share the show with your friends, family, your neighbor down the street. It really helps our show grow. You can also send us stuff to our awesome P.O. Box. 
All this information is available on our beautiful website, which is www.craftparentingpodcast.com. So go check it out because it is beautiful. Ooh. Ah. And I worked really hard on it. Yes, you did. We will post the show notes up there. Plus, we will be writing blog posts about some of the stuff that doesn't make it in the podcast. I am a writer. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the show. We are listed on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and just about every podcast app out there. And with that, I'm Joe. And I'm Caroline. See you next time on the Craft Parenting Podcast. Time gallo, baby, send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me, and I'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm the one. Or something like that. I recorded that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Just gonna start off my singing career. Or just end it in fiery flames of doom. Hey, I heard you have some kids. Does that make you a father? I don't know. That's a weird segue. <laughs> <laughs> what is this Murray? isn't that a show Murray? <laughs> you very long pause are the father ah! <laughs> <laughs> thank you i already knew that <laughs> i mean it's not like they look like you or act like you <laughs> so this week i'm gonna clip that get you canceled <laughs> <laughs> do it but uh Oh, 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 you see, I I am very sleepy. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to end the podcast. <laughs>